Hey everyone, if you'd like to keep up to date with developer best practices and tips in tech, check out GitHub Insider Newsletter via the link in the video description below. As a developer, debugging is one of the most important skills to have, and in VS Code, there's so much that you can do. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the great thing when debugging with VS Code is that for simple files using JavaScript and Node, it works right out the box. In this simple program here that prints out a greeting, to add a breakpoint, I can just go to the line number that I want, let's say it was six, and click on the left-hand side here, which will show a red dot. And to begin the process of debugging, on the left-hand side, you'll see there's an icon for run and debug. And then I can just come over here to click run and debug to start the process. Now, if it's your first time, you may get a drop down like this, at which point you'll just choose node.js. Now, since I've already done that, I can just go to run and debug and it will start the process. And it stops at line six. And now on the left pane, you'll notice several sections. One for variables, which displays the variables in the current debugging scope including their types and values. We have watch that allows you to track the values of specific expressions and variables you're interested in throughout the whole debugging session. Call stack shows the hierarchy of function calls at the current moment in the execution, indicating the path the program took to reach the current point. And loaded scripts lists all the scripts that have been loaded in your current debugging session, which is useful when you're navigating different parts of your code or libraries being used. And at the top of the screen, you'll notice that there's a debug toolbar with a few different buttons. The first being to continue. So after you've stopped at a breakpoint, you just want to continue to the next breakpoint or the end of the program, you hit this button. If you come to a method and you don't want to jump in that method, but step over it, that's what this button here is for. On the flip side, if you do want to step into the method, you hit the down arrow and then to step out of the method, the up arrow. If you want to restart the debugging process, you click restart and to stop it, this red square here. So really those are some of the basics right there, but why don't I show you this toolbar in action in another project with more code. In this project here, it's going to demonstrate polymorphism and it is a C-sharp project. Now, whenever you're going to debug a project that's not supported by default in VS Code, you'll want to go to the extensions marketplace and install the appropriate extensions that you need. So in my case, I needed to install the C-sharp dev kit, which helps you manage your C-sharp code. In addition to the C-sharp extension, and last but not least, the .NET install tool so you can set up the .NET runtime. If you'd like some detailed instructions on setting that up, you can watch the first two modules in this video here. Now this project here demonstrates polymorphism by taking a particular worker and determining what their salary is based on whether or not they are an employee or a contractor. Let's go ahead and choose run and debug. As you can see on line 48, I already have a breakpoint there where it will stop. I'll jump at the very top here and click the play button to start the debugging process. And soon we'll see our debug toolbar at the very top. Let's experiment with some of these buttons. Stepping over, if I wanted to step over this method, it will do so, but let's go ahead and step into it so we could see a few other things. So now I'm stepping into the determine weekly salary and it is for a contractor. On the left pane, you could see variables that are local, such as wage and weekly hours. If there were some other variables that I wanted to add to keep an eye on, I can just click the plus sign under watch and put that there. So let's say I put in person. It does not exist in the current context, which makes sense because we're not seeing it in this method right now. But if I put in salary, it's currently zero. But as I step through, now it has a value of 38.50. So the watch section is very useful for variables that you want to keep track of when it's not defaulted at the very top under locals. Right below here is the call stack. So we are within determine weekly salary. So that's the last method that we called. So that's going to be listed first here, but the level above it is our main program, which we see right below it. So when we get out of this method, we should only see one line, which is for the main 
program. So if we want to step out, let's go ahead and click the step out button. Now, once we step out, you'll notice that it's written that the contractor worked 55 hours with a total of 3850. That's appropriate for a contractor that has overtime. You'll notice that on the watch, now we have a value for a person because it is within context. We can see it's a contractor. We also see that our call stack is now down by one line because we are in our main method. And at the bottom there is just a nice view of all our breakpoints. If I wanted to start this debug session over, I could just click on restart right here. And by default, it shifts to this terminal view, but I could click on debug console again. And now on line 48, rather than stepping into it, I could just step over it, prints out our results one more time. And at this point, I can either continue to the end of the program or just stop the debugging process by clicking this red square here, which is what I'll do. I should also mention that from this debug console, you can check values here quickly also. So if I typed in wage, it shows me 70. If I typed in person, it indicates the object type, which is a contractor. I'd like to turn our attention now to another app. This time it's a React web app that I'm gonna go ahead and launch. And we'll do a little debugging on this app, which is a CRUD application for an employee management software. So you can create an employee. Obviously we can read the records, update them and delete them. Now I'd like to note that when I executed this, it indicated that I'm using port 3000, which is important to note because when we go to debug, you want to make sure that you set up your configuration in launch.json to point to port 3000 in the URL, in addition to these other parameters such as type request, name, and web root. And if you have access to chat, you could simply ask it to define what each of them do, which is fairly straightforward, but I do appreciate the reinsurance. And as it mentions, Type is for the type of browser. For requests, we want to indicate launch because that's what we're doing, launching the browser. Name, pretty much anything can go in there. It's whatever is going to be useful for you. And for the URL, this is where we're going to indicate our specific port. And then, of course, web root, which tells the debugger where the root of the web server is relative to your project. Now, for my demonstration, I'm going to be showing how to manipulate some variables, which will be reflected from the edit page. So I'll add a breakpoint right here and I will start the debugging. And similar to what I've shown before, we're able to set breakpoints to manipulate data, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose edit like I mentioned, and say that we want to change George Blue to, let's say, George Strong, and we click update. As you can see, under our watch variables, it indicates strong. But right from here, I can right click and either add an expression, set value or copy the value. Let's change this. And instead of strong, we'll just say stronger. And when we go to continue the process, we don't have strong, but we have stronger, just as expected. And it's a quite powerful thing to be able to manipulate the variables during the debugging process, especially if there are specific conditions that you want to meet. So let's say I wanted to test a particular condition, but only for the record of Adrian Orange. I can come here and edit this breakpoint and indicate that I only want to hit this breakpoint when the first name is equal to Adrian. Now, if we hover over the breakpoint, we see that it says that there's a condition with our expression. So if I come back up here and change, let's say Rolf is an interesting name. Let's change that to, let's change that to Ronald and click update. It updates without any breakpoint being hit. But if I come over here to Adrian and then want to change this name here to Smith, now the breakpoint gets hit just as we expected. And I'm not going to make any changes. I'm just going to continue and the update is made. Another thing I'd like to show in this uh, web app is in respect to the terminal. If you are a fan of writing out to the console, if you notice here on line 15, there's a console.info command that's executed. And in fact, I can add something additional. We are in edit mode. And now when I run the process to edit and I go to edit a name, even if I don't make any changes, right over here is where it will 
write out some content that I want, specifically about the object of the selected employee, and that we are in edit mode. Another thing to note about this section here is I can have access to the window object if I wanted, and pretty much any other element. If I wanted to go to see the values in the body, I could do that. Let's continue out of this here, just so we could get to the grid, because I now want to demonstrate how I can modify the background if I wanted. Let's say to green, which looks horrible. So let's go ahead and switch it back. But it's nice to know that you have a little flexibility to toy around with it. It looks slightly better, but really we could just put it back to white. But there's even a cool way to manipulate the page, especially if you're using Edge. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you'd like to use Edge to debug, you'll want to make sure that your launch.json is configured properly to use Edge, pointing to the correct port. Once that's set, you can choose Run and Debug. And after you actually click the play button, it should launch. But the main reason I wanted to demonstrate this is because of this extra option here, which was not in Chrome. This will give you the option to access the Edge developer tools within VS Code. So when we click it, what you'll need to do is install Microsoft Edge tools for VS Code. Once that's done and you click it again, now you have access to the same tools that you would in the Edge browser. So now let's go ahead and shrink our window and make some space so we could see what we have access to. And also from here, we could actually modify some elements such as in this body here i can go ahead and choose whatever color i want that text to be whether it's red or green a darker green and it makes it a much nicer experience let's change it back to black over here for the background i can quickly modify it whichever way that i want and again i'm fine with leaving it at a nice white background and so you can play around with this and see other elements you might want to modify using the developer tools as you would in the browser, but now you have the convenience of doing it within VS Code, which is excellent. Hope you enjoyed that. I want to give a quick shout out to Softar Jamal for his React app that I referenced from GitHub. And you could find some more of his work in this link over here. Now, we covered a lot but there's even more in the VS Code docs on debugging at this link over here. If you want me to make another video on other debugging topics like configuring launch.json or anything else in the docs, let's have at least 50 people mention in the comments part two, and we'll make that happen. If you got value out of this video, definitely hit the like button and subscribe to help our channel grow. And I will see you in the next one.